Okay, third big question that I wanted to talk about here is why didn't the same thing happen to Black Sabbath? You know, we've seen Black Sabbath was part, you know, of a big musical scene. There were lots of bands, you know, doing something similar to Black Sabbath. Maybe Black Sabbath was doing it just a little bit heavier or something, but they weren't the only ones doing it. And when you look back at, you know, especially like the self-titled Black Sabbath album, if you take away the title track and you take away, well, let's say NIB, you're left with a lot of songs that, you know, are blues-based rock in the structure. You know, tracks like, you know, uh, Warning, uh, Sleeping Village, uh, you know, it's one other one I want to mention here. Oh, yeah, The Wizard, you know, they're songs. I like them. They're great. Would we consider those heavy metal songs today? Uh, this album has a lot of stuff that, you know, doesn't fit with the modern heavy metal ethos. I really would wonder if you took a couple of those songs off this album, and we just we change this. Let's say this was by Electric Flag, and the album title was, you know, you could still call it Black Sabbath by Electric Flag, and it doesn't have those two songs on it. Would this be considered the first heavy metal album, or would it be lumped in with the hard rock albums of Deep Purple, Uriah Heep, Bang, Sir Lord Baltimore, and all that sort of stuff we now call proto metal? I really do wonder. So why didn't that happen to Black Sabbath? Um, you know, it's easy for us today just to think, well, they are on high, and you know, all shall you know sit at the foot of Ozzy and Tony, and you know, learn the true ways of heavy metal. But remember that Black Sabbath was dead in the water before the new wave of British heavy metal got going. I think a couple of things allowed Black Sabbath to keep their true metal street cred when all the other bands tended to lose it or get rid of it or, you know, disavow themselves of it. I think a big part of it is when the band came back together and put out the two albums with Dio, that they re-energized themselves and they put out two very strong albums that were, you know, without a doubt, solid heavy metal offerings. That's what they were meant to be. They don't sound exactly like the early 70s stuff. They weren't just going back to retro rock stuff. But, you know, they're not progressive albums either. They're not following up on, you know, the direction Sabbath had gradually drifted on, you know, all the way from Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, to Sabotage, to the later albums. You know, folks could say Sabbath, you know, went, you know, somewhat, you know, in more progressive directions and then kind of lost their way. Well, you know, right here, they're right back on the map, you know, with a very firm notion of where they're heading. And so those two albums come out. They're very popular. And... None of the other bands, again, I did that. I mentioned the examples earlier with like, you know, Deep Purple and UFO. When they came out in the 80s with albums, they weren't trying to sound heavy metal and Black Sabbath very much was. You know, it didn't hurt that they got included in the heavy metal cartoon movie based on the magazine at the time. And Mob Rules is, you know, one of the centerpieces for that movie's soundtrack. You know, something that's worth noting here is uh, Morton Popoff. I've heard him make the observation in interviews before that, you know, while these are good albums, you know, the Dio albums and also, you know, Born Again with Gillen. While they're good albums that a lot of people like and love, they do represent a change where Black Sabbath is no longer leading the way of heavy metal. They're not the forerunners anymore. That, in a way, they're becoming part of the pack. And that other bands are, you know, really sort of, you know, the vanguard of heavy metal by that point. That's neither a good thing nor a bad thing, but it's just pointing out that, yeah, Sabbath wasn't cutting-edge heavy metal when Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules come out, but they were considered heavy metal. Now, of course, after Born Again, Sabbath went through a lot of permutations in the 80s, and some of those you know, fans have come to like over the time. I don't think anybody is going to try to argue very strongly that those were important albums to the development of heavy metal through the rest of the 80s. Black Sabbath was sort of an afterthought, and other bands, you know, had very much left them in the dust by then. But Black Sabbath did enough there in the early 80s to, you know, really hold on to that heavy metal label, uh, whereas all their contemporaries didn't. One other thing that most likely plays a role here, this is conjecture on my part, but the success of Ozzy's solo albums in the early 80s 
probably helped Black Sabbath's case stay alive and afloat in people's minds. That you know, Ozzy and Randy Rhodes were you know playing you know, this you know, uh, again heavy metal music that was very popular right away and you know had massive tours and lots of people saw them on tour. You know, for Bark at the Moon and Diary of a Madman. And, you know, you slip a few Black Sabbath songs into the set and there, here and there, and that kind of keeps the association of Black Sabbath with heavy metal moving into the 1980s, whereas you didn't have that happening with other bands. I don't think early 80s Rainbow was going back and playing a lot of Speed King, uh, you know, on their 80s albums. Again, I'm not real familiar with it. I may have just said something really stupid. If so, now's the time to start typing angrily in the comments down below. So, uh, yeah, I think it's those factors that helped Black Sabbath kind of pull through when all the other bands they started out with, you know, kind of uh, eventually got reclassified and Sabbath didn't. All right. I know this video is running a bit longer than intended, and there's a lot of stuff to cover here. Last thing I want to mention, though, is so where does this leave us? What do we do with these bands that started out in the early 70s and used to be called heavy metal but aren't anymore? Well, to be fair, we probably should be calling them heavy metal bands, even though it seems very weird to us because, you know, for years and years now, we've not been labeling them that way. I think we probably should, and I'll give you an analogy for why we should, and it has to do with the development of black metal. You know, when black metal started getting very popular and widespread in the 1990s, you know, with releases by, you know, Dark Throne, early Burzum, early Mayhem and stuff, you know, a lot of people were treating it as, you know, a new musical subgenre within heavy metal. But older fans were quick to point out that, no, you know, Transylvanian Hunger is not the first black metal album. That's not true. This is the first black metal album. And, you know, I remember debates, you know, in chat rooms and message boards and forums and stuff, like in the late 90s and such, that went back and forth on this. It was like, oh, just because the album's called Black Metal doesn't mean, you know, it's Black Metal sounding. It doesn't sound anything like this. Um, but older fans, you know, would push back. It's like, you know, look, these bands like Venom were called Black Metal in the early 80s. Stuff like, you know, Black Metal uh, by Venom, early Bathory early Merciful Fate. Once again, you can go back to the printed zines of the day and see in black and white that people were using the phrase black metal to refer to these bands. Personally, I've always had an issue with that because the reason they were lumped together is lyrical. Let's face it, uh, early Bathory and early Merciful Fate don't sound much alike at all. Musically, stylistically, they're very different. But nevertheless, it was a phrase that was used to refer to these bands that had this overtly satanic, you know, dark, black imagery about them. And so bands, when the Mayhems and, you know, the Vargs of the world started making stuff in the latest 80s and early 90s, they were sort of doing the same thing that Leslie West and company had done in the late 60s and that, you know, that new wave of British heavy metal bands had done in the late 70s. They were taking the music they liked from the previous decade, and they were trying to make it more raw, more aggressive sounding. And they did. It's just that, yeah, in the 90s, black metal bands, you kind of got more of a sound codified for what black metal was sort of going to be like. Now, again, these bands each had their own identity. Burzum did not sound exactly like Mayhem. Mayhem didn't sound exactly like Dark Throne. But there became you know, at least, you know, a very rough template of what it meant to be black metal, not just in terms of having a satanic presentation, but in terms of, you know, having certain stylistic elements in the music. And that was something that was lacking from black metal in the 80s. But we didn't discount 80s black metal. We didn't just say, oh, no, sorry, Venom doesn't get to be black metal anymore. Venom, Merciful Fate, Bathory, Hellhammer. Yeah, we still call those black metal now. We just call them 80s black metal. You know, these can be called 80s black metal albums. And most people aren't going to flinch at that assertion too much. Albums like Burzum, Dark Throne Mayhem, those are referred to as 90s black metal. It indicates that, yes, there's a stylistic shift there. There's something distinct about the black metal of the 1990s. But, you know, the 80s bands get to keep their black metal street cred. 
And I think that's probably what should be done with heavy metal from the 70s, that those early 70s bands from you know, UFO to Black Sabbath, the Led Zeppelins, to all the smaller bands that maybe I'll talk about in another video, uh, you know, the Iron Claws and, uh, you know, Dust and Sir Lord Baltimore, the list goes on and on and on, that yeah, they, they probably deserve that heavy metal street cred back. Maybe we just refer to them as 70s metal, that you have your 70s metal and that the new wave of British heavy metal transitions then into, you know, 80s metal. And both really should be labeled as such. Now, I'm not going to start a letter writing campaign to make this happen. I'm not going to start correcting everybody on every you know, video chat and you know, forum and you know, blog spot or discourse you know, that I see. But yeah, I think it's an interesting exercise uh, to have worked through and thought about and realized that, yeah, these bands were heavy metal. We treated them as heavy metal once upon a time. And if we're going to call... Merciful Fate and Bathory and Venom black metal, then why would we not call you know, Sir Lord Baltimore and Blue Cheer and Bang heavy metal? It's there in print that it was done that way once upon a time. Maybe we forgot that it used to be that way. Maybe we moved the goalposts a bit. But um, yeah, we probably should just start calling that stuff 70s heavy metal and be more consistent and recognize that that was a heavy metal scene in the early 70s. It wasn't just Black Sabbath waiting, you know, five or six years for Judas Priest and Motorhead to pick up the ball and move it forward for them. All right, I've talked more than long enough, so let's wrap this video up. If you have thoughts or comments or feedback about this, please leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know what missteps I've taken uh, in this thought process, what albums I've overlooked, what important events I haven't hit on. I'm sure there's a lot of them that just didn't make it onto my radar. Again, I'm not an expert in that period of musical history, but I find it a really interesting period because it's where heavy metal began. And heavy metal, you know, it's something that a lot of us love. It's very important to us. Um, so I think it's worth exploring and figuring out, yeah, you know, sort of, you know, the roots of uh, how things got started. All right, with that, let's bring this to a close. So until next time, everybody take care. And as always, keep banging your head, even to Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple.